It had been quite a night, so I got to the office a few hours late. I opened the mail, put two bills in a drawer of my desk, tossed an ad for a new type of corset in the waste paper basket. I sat for a while, then I went to the window, looked down at the busy street. I saw a car pull up at the curb, a prowl car. A mob of cops get out. A few seconds later, another prowl car pulled up further down the street, and another group of the boys in blue emptied onto the sidewalk. About five minutes passed, and then... Hi, Kent. Hello, Sarge. My visitor was Detective Sergeant Paul Conway, CIB. He looked around the office as he walked to my desk. How long have you been in here, Kent? Oh, a while. How long? About a uh, quarter of an hour. Anybody come in? No. Fellow with a bullet in him? Bullet, huh? Yeah. Well, that's interesting, but the answer is still no. We chased him through the streets. We think he may have entered this building. Well, he's not here, Sergeant. I'll, uh, I'll open the desk drawers if you like. I didn't ask for any cracks. Well, I'm just trying to help, Sarge. How about the broom closet or the, uh, the safe? Ah. What do you want him for? Murder. Mm. Did you guys put the bullet in him? No. I know he killed him. Well, how many wasting my time here? Yeah. Oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, in case I see him. We don't know. Keep your door locked. I'm giving the same instructions to everybody in the building. Right, Sarge. I locked the door. Sat behind my desk again. Half an hour passed. I went to the window. The prowl cars were gone. I lit a cigarette. And then, uh, well, holy lucky thing, he didn't didn't take your suggestion about that broom closet. You're the uh, guy that yeah, uh, that's right. I. I came up the, the stairs. Your door was open, so... It's a bad habit of mine. You got anything to drink? I'm not in the habit of offering my scotch to killers. I'm no killer. You know, this is one time I'm believing the cops. Ah, oh, no. Look, put, put, put the gun away. I, I came here to get your help. Sorry, brother. For the love of heaven, give me a drink. Sure, sure. I'll also call the cops and tell them to bring a doctor. No, 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 it's, no, it's only a, just a flesh wound. It, my arms stopped bleeding already. Well, how about the blood all over your face? No, no a bullet creased my scalp and knocked me out. Yeah, you really had yourself a little war, didn't you? Yeah. Sit down. No, no, no. Don't use the phone, kid. Sorry. Look, will you listen to me first? Then after I'm through, you can make up your mind what you want to do. Oh, please, Ken, give me a chance. Criminal investigation branch. I was always told you were a square shooter, Ken. That's why I came here. Please, Ken, listen to me. Hello. Hello. This is the CIB. Sorry. Wrong number. <laughs> okay. You can talk. First, what's your name? Edwards. Frank Edwards. Mm -hmm. Why were the cops tagging you? Well, I... Look, Ken, can I have that drink? Yeah, all right. Just don't reach for this gun. You don't have to worry about me. Here. Yeah. Thanks. You said you wanted to talk. Yeah. Yes, I'll try to give you all the facts. I'll give them to you before I pass out. Go on. Mm -hmm. Well, I... I got a telephone call. About an hour and a half ago. Yeah? It was from my partner, Sam Kennedy. We we run an import business together. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, it was a funny sort of call. I... 
I just reached the office. And Sam said he wanted to see me at his place. He has a flat over at uh, Marshall Towers there, only a few streets from here. Yeah? Well, I, I was just about to brace his door buzzer. I heard a shot. The walls are pretty thick, but... Well, the sound wasn't loud, but I, I knew it was a shot. Yeah. Well, I pushed open the door and went in. I saw Sam on the living room floor. There was a fellow there, kneeling beside him. And there was a, a gun on the floor. Well, I, well, I started for this fellow, kneeling there. And the next thing I knew, there was an explosion in my head. But the blackness... Guess I must have went out to it. Yeah, give me your glass. Just a minute. <laughs> yeah. There you are. Thanks. Uh, oh, thanks. I really appreciate this, kid. Save it. Just keep talking. Yeah. Well, I don't know how long I was out to it, but when I regained consciousness, this fellow who had shot me was gone. And Sam was dead. The automatic was still near his hand, but now there was another gun on the floor. I didn't touch anything. I just went down the stairs. I, well, I didn't realize how bad I looked. This blood and everything. Well, then I, I think somebody shouted. I started running. I came into this building. I saw your sign on the door. And, well, well, you know the rest. Mm. That's a good story. Kent, it's not a story. The cops will see it this way. You went to kill your partner and you had a little shooting match. But it was made to look that way. Then why did you run? I don't know. I, I just ran. I had to do... Well, you had your say... Can't. Just sit there. I shoot. What? What? Put down that phone. Put it down. You hear? I'll, I'll shoot. Sure. Sorry. Well, what next? Can't all I want to do is convince you that I'm innocent. Holding my own gun on me isn't the way to do that, Edwards. I'm not going to let the police get me. They will sooner or later. Listen. Listen, Kent, I can pay you. For what? Prove I'm innocent. <laughs> you know, you say the darndest things. <laughs> it's true. I... <laughs> yeah, you're out on your feet from loss of blood. Why don't you give up? I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Please, Kent, believe me. Well, why are you holding my gun on me? Oh, listen, Kent, listen. My, my partner, Sam Kennedy... He, he'd been taking money out of the business. He admitted that over the phone this morning. But he said he had the money to make up for it. He had it in cash. So? So he was killed for the money. Can't you see that? And then, when I showed up... The killer took advantage of it? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's pretty hard to swallow. Oh, listen, Kent, listen. I know Sam did a lot of gambling at, at Jim Carney's place. You've heard of Carney. I know him. Yeah, then you, you know what? What kind of a man he is. Yeah. Yeah. A rat. That's right. But that doesn't mean that... Look, take that case for me, Kent. I've got the money. That won't make me take the case, Edwards. It's got to be done my way. Then you mean you will? If you hand the gun over... No. You'll call the police. Sure I will. It's the only way. You need a doctor. The doctors have to report gunshot wounds. Yeah, but... If... Even if you got past the doctor, you'd have to hide out. Jump at shadows. Uh, Chances are when the cops did find you, you'd try to fight it out and that'd be that. But the way it looks like, I won't have a chance. You'll have me working for you if you hand over the gun. If you don't, well, I'll know that, that what you've been telling me is a great big story. But it isn't. The like... gun, Edwards, and I'll work for you. Well, what'll it be? I don't know. I... I suppose you're right. Yeah. Thanks. 
This wouldn't have done you any good anyhow. There are no bullets in the first two chambers. Huh? By the time you pressed the trigger for the third, I'd have been all over you. Look, Kim, I've got money. I'll give we'll you... We'll worry about that later. The guy in the apartment, what did he look like? Huh? He was... He was very big. Yeah. Well over six feet. His nose was so flat. Mm -hmm. A big jaw. He wore a, a brown suit. I phoned the CIB. Sergeant Paul Conway had just got in. I told him to bring a doctor and come straight to my office that I was holding his man for him. He arrived with a police doctor and three friends. The doctor did what he could for Frank Edwards, and the cops took him away. Paul stayed with me for a while. Sir, uh, had him all the time. Yeah, yeah, but I knew nothing about it. He was in the broom closet. Am I expected to believe that? No, but it's the truth. <laughs> That's a lot. If you think so, this will make you hysterical. I figure he's innocent. Too bad I'm not the laughing type. Yeah, if you were, here's something that'd make you roll on the floor. I'm going to prove he's innocent. Jim County rang a baccarat school in an apartment house that overlooked the Garden Island dockyards. Well, you never know who's going to be at the door these days. May Thomas went with Connie's apartment. She was built like a hen-pecked accountant's pipe dream. Come to prison back or our private eye? Maybe. Then I'm sorry, but we've closed him. Oh, why? Well, we heard that things were going to be warm for us. So, Jim's looking around for new surroundings. Jim in? Nope. I'll bet you a fiver you're wrong. <laughs> it's easy money. You're on. Come in. Thanks. Um, Larry Kent? I'd like you to meet Chipper. Chipper Davies, late of Melbourne. Hi. Hello. Tell Larry what he's doing to you. Hey, wait a minute. I've heard of this guy. He's a private snoop. It's all right. He plays back around himself. Tell him where Jim is. Looking for a new place for his games. See, Larry, that'll cost you a fiver. Yeah. There you are, May. Thanks. So you're just up from Melbourne, Chipper, huh? Yeah. What are you doing in Sydney? Why should you want to know? Why, eh? I wanted to know because Chipper Davies was about six and a half feet high, had a flat nose, a big jaw, and was wearing a brown suit. I don't like blokes staring at me, Private Eye. You should be used to it by now. What do you mean by that? Well, you make an imposing figure. Sort of fellow another guy remembers and can give you a good description of. What is this, Larry? I'm passing the guy a compliment. I don't like the way you said it. As a matter of fact, I don't like a lot of things about you. Easy, Chipper. Let him go. The big ones make such a nice noise when they go down. Why, you little... No, Chipper. You heard what he said. Jim doesn't like it if you lose your head. Yeah. All right, May. You know, it's funny. Better take it quietly, Larry. Sure, yeah. I was only going to say that I can't see the strings. Strings? Yeah. The strings that Jim Carney pulls to make you move. You know something? I'm going to like meeting you in a dark alley one of these days, Private Eye. Just name the alley. You're not using your head, Larry. Chipper didn't use his a few hours ago, either. I don't get you, Kent. Don't you? Maybe you'd better explain, huh? I'll get closer to you because you're not talking loud enough. Chipper. Jim. 
Well, what's this? Hello, Connie. What are you doing up here, Kent? Just having a talk with your paid assassin. All right, Kent, you ask No, for you it. don't. You take one more step, Chipper, and I'll put another buttonhole in your shirt. Got an all, huh? Come over and make it a trio, Connie. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Kent? Positive. Maybe you'd better think about it, Larry. I've already done my thinking. About five grand's worth. Which means? Five thousand pounds, Connie. <laughs> you don't make sense. I will in just a couple of minutes. I figure that what I know is worth five thousand to you, Connie. For that kind of money, you'd have to know a lot. I do. Like... Well? Like what, Ken? The three of them were looking at me intently. There was fear in their eyes. I got ready to do a lot of guessing, some lying, and a lot of bluffing. I'm waiting to hear what you've got to say, Kent. Your uh, hired gun looks worried, Connie. I'm going to get my hands on your neck and I... That'll be a change. You used a gun this morning. What is this, Kent? Sounds to me like some comedian's been giving you a lot of misinformation. The comedian had been hit with two bullets. What's this crumb talking about? The guy's name is Frank Edwards. He had a partner named Sam Kennedy. I said had because Kennedy is dead. Sam Kennedy? Dead? Yeah. First I've heard of it. Why, Sam's one of our clients. Yeah. He was only here the other night. Which is why Chip is here now. Which is why Sam Kennedy is dead. You're still not making any sense, Kent. Look, Connie, let's put our cards on the table. Here's what I know. First, Sam Kennedy was losing a lot of dough playing Baccarat till the other night when he made a killing. He won a little. He won a lot. That's why you've closed the games. You don't want the police asking your other clients a lot of embarrassing questions about exactly how much he did win. It was a few hundred. Uh, uh, it was enough so that Connie and you wanted your hands on him. It was enough so that you could afford to import our friend Chipper here from Melbourne. I like this crumb less and less. You keep your distance, sonny boy. Uh, Kent, this is all very interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm only starting. Let him keep talking. He's got such a wild imagination. No, honey. No, not imagination. These are facts. When Chipper arrived from Melbourne, you put the finger on Sam Kennedy. So this morning, Chipper went to Kennedy's apartment. He did what he had to do, then he impressed Kennedy's prints on the murder gun and lay the gun near the body. He was ready to hit the road when Frank Edwards busted in. I said keep your distance, Chipper. Go on, Kent. You got me in suspense. Well, a while before that, Frank Edwards received a phone call from Kennedy who told him he'd made a killing here at Baccarat. Kennedy told him because he'd been milking money from the till wanted to set things straight. And Chipper had another gun. He fired two shots at Edwards, who went down. One slug scraped his temple. Chipper figured he was dead. He had to change his plans. He wiped the prints from the first gun, put Edwards' prints on it, then he put Kennedy's prints on the second gun, which made it look like they'd had a little war. Uh, uh, pardon me while I go on, will you? You don't kid me, Connie. You're worried... The three of you are. We've got nothing to be worried about. Well, that might be because I haven't come to the really interesting part. And what might that be? Chipper's fingerprints. What fingerprints? On the gun you shot Edwards with. The automatic. This guy's crazy. You were I... careful to wipe your prints from the outside of the gun, Chipper, but you forgot one thing. The clip. There were two very clear prints on the cartridge clips. Clip? Yeah. I figure that's worth five grand, don't you, Connie? This Edwards fellow... I've got him on ice at the CIB. He doesn't know about the prints on the clip. Maybe I won't tell him. If I get five grand. Look, I wiped the clip, Connie. I'm sure oh, I wiped it. fool, Chipper. Ah, who's not worried now? Well, do you keep up the masquerade, Connie? 
You do? I hand that clip to the cops. Where do you have it? Yeah, that's better. I said, where do you have it? In a place you'll never find it. But it's yours for five grand. I... I can't get that kind of money without going to the bank. I'll give you eight hours to rake it up. But I... Don't. Eight hours. I'll be waiting in my apartment. It's five o'clock. You've got till one in the morning. So long. Well, I'd done my guessing and my lying and my bluffing. And it had paid off. I didn't go straight home. I arrived at the apartment at about eight. And then I waited. Nine o'clock. Ten. Half past. I took out my thirty-eight, went to the door, moved fast. Hello. Hi. As you can see, I'm alone. Is that a gun you're holding behind the door? <laughs> you're going to shoot me, are you, Larry? Come on in. Oh, thank you. That's a nice gun. Glad you like it. What there is of it. <laughs> well? Jim sent me. And? You win. Five thousand? Mm-hmm. Here it is in my purse. Ten pound. <laughs> Don't try anything, Larry. It's only a twenty-two Smith and Wesson, but it, it'll do the job. I should have had my eyes open. So now Connie is using a dame to do his dirty work. Not exactly. All right, Jim. Nice work, May. Where's Chipper? Where you'll be very soon, Kent. Taking a guess, I'd say you meant the bottom of the harbor. That's an idea. But Chipper's in French's forest. Soon there'll be bush flowers growing all over his head. It was too, uh, dangerous having a dope like that around, huh? Exactly. I want the clip, Kent. But you don't need it with Chipper dead. I like everything tied up neatly. Suppose I, uh, don't give it to you. Then you die harder. Maybe I left a letter where a lawyer could get his hands on it. I'll take that chance. There's still Frank Edwards and his story. He'll tell the cops about seeing Chipper there over Kennedy's body. But Edwards couldn't possibly know about Chipper. He's worried, Jim. I was looking forward to this. How does it feel to be worried, Larry? Not so good. But you two aren't out of it yet. There's the phone call Edwards got from Kennedy telling him about the big win he had at your place. No one else knows about that call, Kent. The gentlemen of the CIB will say it's a very nice story. They'll check with me and I'll admit that Kennedy won some money. I have an alibi for the time of the shooting. So does May. You're the only link in the chain that can bring the police to us, Larry. Not you. There's nothing. Going to let me have the clip? If it means you don't shoot me. No. He must have it here, Jim. You'll never find it. I don't think we'll even bother looking for it. Let the police find it later. They'll probably think it's one you left laying about. But they know the clip is missing from the automatic that was on the floor. He's right, Jim. Hold the gun on him. I'll search this room first. Mm -hmm. He started searching. His back was to me. May's back was to the bedroom door. It opened quietly. Then... All right. Freeze. <laughs> what? what? Did you hear enough, Sarge? Plenty. Drop the gun, lady. What? Better do as he says, May. No, May. Get Kent. <laughs> She didn't because I grabbed her wrist and twisted huh? A lot of things happen in less than a second. May let go of the little gun. Oh, On the other side of the room, Carney clawed at his pocket for the gun that bulged there. It was a fool move. Sergeant Paul Conway was a dead shot. <laughs> I don't think he hears you, May. But we're going to hear you, aren't we, lady? Down at headquarters, if you're smart, you're going to tell us a lot. And she did. The body of Chipper Davis was recovered, 
I got a check from Frank Edwards. Believe it or not, some kind words from the boys in blue. On top of that, Frank Edwards had a sister. She appreciated all I did for her brother. She was a redhead with green eyes and a wonderful nature. She had a nice apartment all by herself over it. No, that's one thing I'm not going to broadcast. Good night.